ahead and move to 4.12 chancellor's reports. Thank you, Vice President Delphine Polk. Um, tonight, I think we will follow the um, alphabetical order of our presentations, starting with um, BCC and then COA, followed by Laney and then Merritt College. So I will turn it over to President Angelica Garcia. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, Vice President Delphine Polk, Chancellor Jackson, trustees, colleagues, and community members. In addition to the board report in your packet for this evening, I'd like to highlight a few items at Berkeley City College. Next Tuesday, November 1st at 10 a.m., Berkeley City College is being recognized as a champion of higher education for the college's work in supporting students to successful completion of an associate degree for transfer. This is the fourth consecutive year that BCC has received this recognition. Additionally, BCC is being recognized for two consecutive years now as an equity champion in higher education for increasing the number of Latino, Latina, Latinx students who complete an ADT. This means that at least 65% of Berkeley City College Latinx associate degree earners earned an ATD. We are honored that the Campaign for College Opportunity recognized the brilliance and excellence of BCC students, and therefore they are recognizing the commitment and work of classified professionals, faculty, and administrators alike in supporting students to transfer. There are numerous individuals who contribute to this effort, but I want to take a moment to integrate how these equitable student outcomes are supported by campus-wide efforts in the implementation of guided pathways, the integration of instruction and student services, and most importantly, in our work to empower students to realize their goals and aspirations. So we hope um, that all who are tuning in might be able to join via that virtual um, event next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Um, as has been mentioned in the classified Senate reports last week, we had a lively, engaging, and well-attended mid-semester college flex day across the district. Um, here at BCC, from our opening presentation of the educational master plan sessions to, excuse me, to sessions about guided pathways, um, it, it really was a day filled with learning and community building. There was a focus session for classified professionals to really engage in discussion and action planning for guided pathways work. As many of our classified colleagues are often the first point of contact for students. Um, so I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to the Professional Development Committee, um, which has multi-constituents on there for planning such an amazing day. Um, during our college roundtable this past week, uh, we had a presentation on the annual program update templates. Um, I know they're not very exciting, but they're very exciting to me and to us as a college um, because these templates for instruction, student services, and administrative units are a product of um, our governance process. So the integrated planning committee um, reviewing previous years and making intentional revisions. And so the template calls upon us to reflect on our goals, review disaggregated data, and intentionally reflect and revise our teaching and service delivery to contribute to equitable student outcomes. Um, the APU is aligned with our budget development process taking place in our IPAR committee, Integrated Planning and Allocation of Resources Committee, and is also closely aligned with um, the overall district budget development model. Um, and lastly, in closing, um, I would like to take a moment to express my thoughts and concerns regarding the anti-Semitic hate speech that has surfaced in our state these recent days. Um, as a college and district that's committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion, you know, I'm, I'm proud to serve as the president of Berkeley City College, where building an inclusive community requires that people feel heard, seen, and appreciated for their presence. Um, the racial reckoning that we have seen over the past years has called into discourse and into taking action on anti-Black, anti-immigrant, anti-Asian, anti-LGBTQ+, anti-Semitic hate speech, um, to name a few. I do not claim to be as culturally fluent as I would like to be, but I do want the Berkeley City College community to know that I'm committed to continue our work with faculty, classified professionals, and management colleagues to ensure that BCC is safe for those who walk through our doors. And my hope for our Peralta community is that we will continue to engage one another as colleagues, as neighbors, to see strengths, wisdom, and contributions of all, um, especially for those who may believe differently than we do. Students in the community are counting on us to engage in the very difficult dialogues needed to advance social and racial justice. 
that concludes my remarks for this evening. Thank you. Good evening, President Abel Ariz, Vice President Delphine Polk, trustee members, Chancellor Jackson, colleagues, and members of community. I would like to start with students. The Associated Students of College of Alameda, ASCOA, has a full slate of amazing student leaders. Several weeks ago, we heard the presentation from the president, Natalie Myers. And after she finished the presentation, I had to readjust my own because she covered everything that happened at COA. I met her the other day at COA campus and she was standing next to this room and I said, you did an amazing job, uh, President Myers. And the woman next to her, she said, that's my daughter. I have two amazing daughters and they're going to do much better than I did in life. I had tears in my eyes because it recognizes why we're here in education, to provide education so the next generation is better off than us. We send these kids to school so we can see them prosper. And as an empty nester, of course, those tears started rolling down my face. In addition to the President Myers, we have some amazing uh, senator and vice president, um, Simeon Thompson, Karen Torres, Guilherme Santos, the Marcus Siamon, Auhiba Kuchech, and Junhao Jema. What is amazing about this student is that they have been in every single shared governance committees. They were there on Friday when we, when we had the Institutional Effectiveness a Partnership Initiative and the Perth team coming and discussing. And it was really amazing to see them focus on their education and providing great ideas. So we are in safe hands with these leaders um, focusing on their education and also supporting all the work that we do. So I would like to thank them. Focusing on people tonight and talking about leaders, I'd like to announce that COA went back into the future and brought one of um, the previous deans and administrators in the acting vice president of instruction role that I vacated temporarily as a result of uh, vice chancellor um, Jones being at the district. I want to say a few words about committed leaders and leadership. Uh, Professor Jones has been serving Peralta Community College for 25 years as an English professor, as academic senate president, as a PFT rep, as an English chair, as a co-chair in every committee and shared governance committee that you can think about. He's committed, he believes in the power of education and what he brings from COA, the balance approach that Angelica was talking about. In this world of polarized views, we as education institutions have a responsibility to model to our students, to each other, to our community, a better civic engagement. It is because it is us as an educator that can agree to disagree on issues. And this is what Professor Jones brings, that balance approach. Let's sit and discuss. Let's think about another view. So I really do believe with anti-immigrants, anti-Black, anti-Semitic uh, comments that are being made, we got to come together because we really care about education and we really care about communities. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But in the process of discussing with each other, we can get things better. I'm talking about new people coming at COA, I would like to emphasize um, Alejandro Gonzalez joining the CESO team with lots of experience. So this is a product of community college. He was uh, born in South Central LA, went to community college there then transferred to um, UC Berkeley on Chicana Chicano studies and sociology 
and now he's uh, serving at Asesso and Puente program. So we're really excited to have him. And part of what we do is also giving a second chance to people because life, it's strange sometimes and it gives us that zigzag. So as part of Project Rebounds, the director for workforce systems, Stephanie Bradshaw at um, COA and the career coach consultant, Kimari Williams, attended the Project Rebound event in September at California State University East Bay in Hayward. So this is a special admission and support program for formerly incarcerated students. And this is what we're working with to make sure that they have a second chance in life and in our society and integrating them. The Flex Day was a success. We had 86 people in person and 40 people joined us remotely. We had an exciting and engaged discussion about what is the COA going to be headed in five years from now? Our West Ed consultants were listening in the sessions, but the session were um, for two hours, we talked about the mission, values, changing demographics, changing needs, we talk about campus climate, how do we support each other better? So it was a really successful event. And um, this concludes my report for tonight. Good evening, Chancellor Jackson, President Napoli Abella Reese, members of the governing board, and valued colleagues, community members, and of course, students. You know, when I give these reports, sometimes I find that uh, some of my thunder gets, or the thunder I thought I had um, ends up getting borrowed or or it's not, the, the amount I had, I didn't, was more than I thought uh, because often our student government representative uh, says something that has the very same theme or the very same buzzword, as, if you will, that I have at the beginning of my report typically. And that's that's good. That means that, you know, what the students are experiencing or what employees experiencing is it, it, there's alignment and that's often a good thing. Well, tonight I'm happy to share my thunder uh, with uh, District Academic Senate President and uh, we're so proud, uh, Professor Donald Moore, who used the word vibrant. And if I showed you my cue cards, you could see my first sentence says, Laney has been a vibrant campus over the past few weeks. So it's I'm again I'm I'm pleased that uh, I'm not just the only one saying that. This past month on October sixth, uh, I have a few events in the board report that are there, and I'll just touch on them briefly. On October sixth, uh, with nine CTE disciplines participating, eight industry partners, um, all of whom are listed in your board report, and seven high schools from the Oakland Unified School District, we had Manufacturing Day. Uh, in the in the industry community as well as on the campus community at Laney, and it was a, a great event. On October 10th in our quad, we had Transfer Day, again, one of those vibrant events that took place. And then uh, last week on the 20th, as part of Undocumented Students Week uh, around our great state, we had a resource fair uh, to support those students at Laney College. So lots lots of great things going on. But one thing I'd like to highlight that was not in your report this evening is that on October 14th and 15th, um, Laney was so pleased to host the Asian Pacific American Institute for Congressional Studies as they held a leadership institute in the bistro of our campus. Uh, I was very fortunate uh, to attend and, and offer opening and, and uh, kind of mid-seminar mid remarks. And I say fortunate because my name certainly would, would not have gotten top billing. I mean, we had just so many outstanding colleagues, starting with Dr. David Lee and Dr. Mildred Lewis, along with um, our, Dr. Marlon Hall and our support staff at Laney and, and colleagues, but also appearing um, with this group that came from Washington, D.C. to put on this institute were um, City Council Member Sheng Tao, El Cerrito Mayor Gabriel Quinto, Dublin Mayor Sean Kumagai, uh, Dublin uh, Council Member Sherry Hu, uh, San Mateo Council Member Amorance Lee, Daly City Council Member Jocelyn Manuela, uh, OUSD School Board Member Dr. Amy uh, Ng, and from the Oakland Vietnamese Chamber of Commerce, as well as our very own Foundation Board, uh, Dr. Jennifer Tran. It was a really just a great, inspiring event, and 
And just, um, you know, anytime you mention leadership development, you got me and uh, they, they had me certainly on the 14th and 15th. And I think it was a great event. We've also been very busy at Laney supporting our community. Um, as you all know, on August 30th, we had our mayoral debates. Uh, we hosted that. And then um, this past week on the 20th, uh, we were happy to welcome uh, Barbara Lee as uh, Co Congress member Barbara Lee of the 13th district as she held a panel discussion, uh, reproductive freedom at the ballot box. And on this very illustrious panel from the 37th district, there was also Congress member Judy Chu. I think all of those events have been good practice for really a neat event that's coming up and I, which is on November 10th, we will be hosting. Um, as our district and our colleges ponder and consider our long-term goals and our long-term strategic plans, a uh, charrette um, with our community and Laney College is humbled and honored uh, to be hosts for that. I don't often talk about internal things going on at Laney, but there are a couple things I would like to highlight. Uh, Dr. Garcia, I, I'll share some thunder with you on this as well. Um, but as of midnight last night, our areas um, across our college submitted their program reviews. Um, and, uh, you know, looking at dis disaggregated data and what it meant for means for student achievement, the outcomes that we all are chasing for our students and are we reaching them? A lot of those things and a, a lot of that planning that really has us walking the talk of our strategic goals and objectives at Laney and the service to our students. This was an endeavor that took place and, uh, and yes, even the president's office submits a program review and I'd like to express my appreciation to Arlene Lontok and Clifton Coleman uh, just for supporting, uh, supporting my office as we did that work. Uh, in addition to that, I would like to commend uh, our classified leadership. I'm so honored to be participating uh, for the naming of the Rene Rivas Lounge. Um, I had the privilege of uh, working with Rene uh, when I first began at Laney and that's something that uh, I, I would say our classified leadership was right on with, with this recommendation. Also, um, it was really great to see across our, our college, uh, just all of the work that went into Flex Day and, um, and just the planning and the execution and, and, and the coming together that took place among classified professionals and faculty, uh, faculty on this great day. And then finally, uh, and I'll be sharing further details about this, but uh, two Mondays ago, we were happy to um, also welcome our peer review team from the Institutional Effectiveness Partnership Institute as they did their visit at our college. So far, we've kind of followed the playbook steps of um, submitting and, and our project and everything, and we've uh, completed that first visit. But now the, the interaction with that visiting team is really going to kick in and I'm looking forward to the visit that they'll be having with us virtually in December. So I think exciting times are ahead. Speaking of exciting times, I, I guess there won't be a, a board report from Laney without some mention of guided pathways. And I'm, and I'm so pleased to announce again that as we really tell our students about the pathways that they might want to be interested in and, and really having them informed and looking at areas of interest, we are going to have our jams that will kick off and take place November 1st through the 4th. Uh, we invite the entire Peralta community to come and attend these and learn about our 150 plus programs from all of our employees, uh, even alumni and current students. There will be presentations, Q&A sessions, and so much more. Uh, they will take place twice each day from the 1st to the 4th, once at 3.30 for an hour and a half, and again for an hour and a half uh, starting at 5 p.m. And just to reflect the changing times we're in, we will have them in multiple modalities, which means that uh, people can join us in person and we'll, we'll be glad to see them and, and, or, or online or virtually. And we look forward to that as well. Um, also, uh, and I'll be re uh, sharing this a bit more in our um, report at the next board meeting, but uh, certainly always good to commend um, Professor Eleni Gastis and our student journalists with The Citizen. They attended the Journalism Association of Community Colleges Northern California Conference on the 22nd. And from what I understand, they took, uh, they took home quite a bit of hardware, including the prestigious General Excellence Award. So really looking forward to kind of put pen to paper in my next board report and share more details with you. And then finally tonight, um, I'd like to tell another Laney success story. Uh, our, the President's Emergency Fund is something that, uh, especially in these 
very trying times will lend a hand to students that 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 are in need. And I remember last year when, or the last time I came and talked to you about this, I believe I said something that we had raised thirty thousand um, dollars, and really most of it was through employee giving. Well, the, all the thirty thousand was exhausted in uh, in scholarships to students, but I have a new balance to report to you. Again, th- greatly in part through employee giving at Laney College, forty thousand dollars. This is incredible. Uh, it's just a small piece of the fundraising we do. Not only is Laney College, but the all four colleges and the Peralta Colleges Foundation, and uh, just something to absolutely be celebrated. And I, I just as the president of Laney College, uh, to the employees of the Laney community, from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you. This concludes my report. So good evening, board of trustees, chancellor, colleagues, and uh, community. Um, This evening, I fully intended to uh, share some good news from Merritt College. I enjoy being able to to give you all good news like the other presidents. So my intention was to talk about our transfer day um, where we had 113 students attend the event and 40 different colleges representing. Um, I intended to talk about the uh, job fair that we had with the with our CIS and computer sciences team, uh, where we had employers, 11 employers come to campus um, and Bubba Smith, Bubba, Bubba Paris for the San Francisco 49ers with our keynote speaker was a great event, or even talk about the women of the Black Panther event that Trustee Hogan uh, mentioned earlier uh, that was organized by Siri Brown. But unfortunately for the third time in four months, I have the unenviable duty to share bad news and that is this morning we lost someone very near and dear to the people at Merritt College. Um, Jennifer Briffa who is a faculty member. Um, I can't say was, it's kind of hard. I I can't even say it in the past tense. Who was a a faculty member in child development uh, passed away this morning. she was, um, again, respected and, and, and admired. Uh, many of her former students are married employees. Um, and she was just a giant on our campus. Um, I just, I was struggling with what to say. So uh, the Dean, uh, Chris Foster wrote something that I wanted to share with you all that I think encapsulates um, who Jenny is. So just kind of bear with me. Um, I affectionately called Jenny by those who knew her well. She was a woman of many talents with the ability to open her heart and embrace people from all walks of life and carried a strong presence that commanded respect. At the core were her concerns for the children, their development, their education, and the provision of services to them. Uh, Jenny was four years of age when she came with her family from Peru, and settled in San Francisco. She met her husband, her future husband, Silvio Briffa, at a dance company where they danced together for many years. They later married and parented two sons. But when she decided to leave dance, she knew she wanted to work with children. And that's when she applied to Merritt College where she earned her AA in child development in 1966. Jenny was affiliated with this college for 56 years. She was encouraged by Merritt faculty and staff to continue her education. So she went on to Hunter College in New York where she earned a bachelor's and master's degree in early childhood education. Um, She returned to Merritt College as a part-time professor and became a full-time tenured faculty member in 2017. She designed non-credit and Spanish language development courses. She engaged in partnerships with ECE community agencies and learning communities with wraparound services for adults. She was the department chair She was the college coordinator for both the Child Development Training Consortium and the Early Childhood Mentor Program. She was a senator in the Academic Senate, and she was instrumental in influencing the decision for Merritt to open up um, classes and services at the Lau Center. Um, She also worked with a group of Latinx faculty and staff to create the first Latinx graduation, um, as well as being a founding member of Poplin. 
Her contributions to Merritt College and the community are, are without end, and we will miss her, a woman who respected and promoted sisterhood among all women. She was loved and supported by her family, and she passed away this morning um, surrounded by family and friends. So um, that concludes my report. I just uh, you know, wanted to um, you know, end uh, the meeting in her honor, if that's, if that's OK, uh, just to show that uh, we love and miss her. Thank you, President Thank Johnson. We will do that. Thank you. Thank you, presidents. Um, I usually just let the, the president speak and, and remain silent because I really think it's important for them um, to sunshine what they're doing on the campuses because they're the ones that are there directly interfacing with our students. But there's been many comments tonight and at previous board meetings regarding residency. Um, and these comments are made in a public forum, therefore errors of fact cannot be addressed. So tonight I'd like to provide some facts before I turn it back over to the board vice president. Um, and I feel it's incumbent upon me to do so, uh, to let you know these facts. At the end of September, 2022, we had approximately 1,948 employees. I say approximately because that number changes as people tender their resignations, get new jobs, get onboarded, um, et cetera. But at the end of September, 2022 was 1948. Of that number, 40% of our employees reside outside of our service area, a total of 780 employees. 30 of those employees reside outside of the state. Two are administrators, nine are classified professionals, and 19 are faculty. And although we continue to make progress in diversity, equity, and inclusion, we are not unaware of the challenges this entails. We continue to make progress by establishing specific standards that can be measured and benchmarked, and that we can objectively determine our progress. It really has nothing to do with residency. However, I believe that the board established the small business and local enterprises as an aspirational goal. We are making progress, but I agree with the comments that Part of our ongoing goal of transparency is to identify what we do, how we do it, and how we can honestly and respectful of each other move forward. We may not always agree. If something is wrong, let's change it. If our aspirational goals need to be made and codified into measurable goals that can be benchmarked, then we should do so. But we are currently under the policies that guide us until those are changed. So I wanted to put that out as a fact. They can be checked. But I wanted the board to understand and the public to understand that we don't have to be adversaries to move forward. We can work together and we continue to do so as we make progress toward meeting the goals of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, let's move over to our presentations, 5.1, CARES, HER Funds Report.